Hi, and welcome to this tutorial about Banktree Personal Finance version 3. In this tutorial, I will talk to you about entering transactions. We have covered most of the groundwork required for setting up the software in my previous tutorials. If you have not viewed the previous tutorials, then it would be a good idea to go through the Accounts, Categories and the File Imports tutorials. They cover the basic setup and give you some familiarity with Banktree Personal Finance. Let's get started with learning about transactions. Transactions are entered straight into the account register. You enter a new transaction in the entry line. This is shown in Peach and it can be on the top of the screen or the bottom. You can switch this from the top to the bottom by going to the account bar. Right click and then select or unselect the first line entry option. Before you start to enter a transaction, make sure your screen is comfortably positioned. If you do not have a large enough monitor or screen, you can hide the account bar and the totals. Due to the on-screen recording, my screen is not maximised. If I maximise, it looks like this. There is plenty of space with the account bar and the account register shown simultaneously. As I need to use the current screen size for recording, I will truncate some of the columns to get the full view of all the columns at once. OK, let's go to a new line. Select the date from the drop-down menu. We'll enter a transaction for the 18th. We'll now select a payee. I can select a previous payee. It remembers the last transaction and uses that information to populate the current transaction. Let's create a new payee to start with. I click into the payee box and enter my new payee. I then select from the categories. I have various options available. Add a split multiple category, add a new category, or select from existing categories. It shows the main category at the start and the subcategory is indented. I can also select a transfer account. These are listed right at the bottom and are shown with the blue transfer icon. I will add a new category to start with. As I tab into the next field, I get the Categories and Budgets screen. I enter my new category and I click on Save. So that is now created. Once I exit the dialog box, I'm back in the Transactions screen and I can select the new category. I can enter or select a previous payment. In this instance, I will select cash payment. I can enter a reference number if I have one, for example, a check number. I can enter a description for that transaction. So I'm going to say I'm paying out £100. You can use your keyboard or click on the buttons and press the enter when done. You can select the status, click the icon to cycle through these choices. Grey icon for uncleared, blue icon for cleared and the black icon for reconciled. Saving updates the balance, both the running balance and the total at the end. And it will also update the balance on the screen as it is entered into the account. The next type of transaction we will look at are transfers. In order for me to create a transfer, I need to create some accounts. I will create two types. I go to the Tools menu and then Accounts. 
I create a cash account for GBP called Cash GBP. This will be a cash account. It is part of my bank groups. I won't set a bank for it yet and I will leave the currency as pounds and then I will save. I then set up another account for euros called Cash Euro. Again, it's part of the bank groups, but this time we'll have a euro currency. And then save. Once complete, I close the screen. The account bar has been updated with those two accounts. I will select a previous payee I created before. I'll select Bank of UK. I select a category, but this time I don't select from an existing category. I go right to the bottom of the list for the accounts. In this instance, it will be Cash GBP. It will be a direct debit payment paid annually. It will be for £100. I then save that. This time it has created the transfer record shown by the blue icon. It's for £100 and again the amount is deducted from the account as it updates. Now if you click on the transaction and go to edit transaction and then select go to transfer, it shows me the other transfer account. It's the cash GBP account. While the other transaction was a paid out transaction, this is a paid in one for £100. I can switch between the two. Right click and go to transfer and switch back again. The idea behind transfers is there's a link between both accounts. Once you change the amount for one of the accounts, the amount for the other account is also updated. Now for foreign currency accounts, things are slightly different. Let's create a new foreign currency transfer. I will create a new payee and call it Transfer Trans. I then select the Euro account and it will be set up as a regular payment. I enter £100 being paid out and save the transaction. That is £100 coming out of my sterling account. If I then look at the transfer and go to the euro account, it has a paid in value of 121.57. Banktree has automatically gone to the appropriate website to obtain the correct exchange rate for GBP and euros. Typically banks use a different exchange rate, so the software allows you to change the value to whatever your bank sets. After saving it, if we now check the original transaction, it stays at £100 and that won't change. Now let's look at entering a split transaction. A split transaction is when you have assigned a purchase to multiple categories. This would be useful if you run a small business and you want to record the VAT, for example. You would assign the full value in the initial transaction and then split this for the VAT and the net part of the transaction. You may also use a split transaction if you want to show multiple purchases made for a single transaction. So, for example, with a cash withdrawal, this happens quite a lot. We'll go through that as an example. I take cash from the bank and I go to my favourite clothes shop. I start to enter the transaction as normal. So I will select the date, then the payee. The shop is called High Street Styles. I then select the Split Multiple Categories option from the Category list. I am presented with the split transaction screen. So in the shop I bought a hat for £11 and some leather shoes for £30.
I've spent £41. Once all the amount has been used up, I can close the split dialog box and the transaction is then updated. When I close the split transaction screen, I am told the split total does not match the original amount. As the original amount was zero and the split total is £41. It just does a quick check to see that nothing was left out. It then updates the transaction amount to £41 and shows the category as a split. I can then carry on filling in the details as if it were a cash purchase. So, to amend the split, you cannot just amend the paid out amount. If I tried to change this amount, it would always revert back to the split total. The way to amend would be to click on the split button. This brings up the split transaction screen showing the split details. I can amend any of the details or add a new split transaction. So, if I decided to go back to the shop and get some trousers, which I probably would, it would then add that to the transaction total. The split value would be updated. One very useful feature of the software is you can attach your receipts against your transaction. Right click the selected transaction and find the store receipt after you have scanned it into your computer. And select attachments and attach. If I attach this sample receipt and select open, it will save the details against the transaction. You can then see there is a paperclip icon next to the transaction. If I right click again and go to the attachments and select the file I have just attached, I can view the receipt. If you are using the Banktree mobile app, you will find this is one of the features that is available. So the mobile app and the desktop app can sync together with your receipts. You can use your smartphone camera to take pictures of your receipts. When you sync the two together, the receipts will come back to the desktop application with the correct transaction attached to it, which is a useful tool when you're out and about. You don't need to take your computer with you to record your transactions. Well, thank goodness for that. You can use the free Banktree mobile app, which is available on iOS and Android. You can also assign keywords to your transactions. These are set up under the Tools menu. Then select Transaction Keywords. Adding keywords is quite straightforward. You give the keyword a value. So I'm just going to enter Personal. I then save and that is shown in the left of the screen. I can then assign that to any of the transactions. In this instance, I right-click the transaction, go to Keywords, and then assign the personal keyword to the transaction. Keywords are very powerful when you run a Banktree report. To run a report, go to Customize and select the keyword as the keyword filter, and then click on OK. It then finds the transactions that have the matched keyword. Again, a very useful facility that will give you a bit more control with your transactions. Going back to the Tools screen, all of the setup is done here. It gives you a single screen for all your tools options. I can set up accounts, groups, securities, banks, payees, categories and budgets, and payment types and transaction keywords. We have already set up accounts before by adding accounts, account groups and securities. Don't worry about securities for now, it will be covered in another tutorial. 
Any bank institution can be added in Bank Tree. You have a single point of information, so you can enter your bank name, address, telephone number and website, and a few other fields. In this example, we have set up Barclays. We have also added the Barclays website. If we go back to our accounts, we can assign Barclays as the bank for our cash account. When we revert back to our account, the account name is highlighted and available as a clickable link. If we click on that, it takes us to the Barclays website, which is so handy to access the bank's online banking. Also, we can sort out our payees. We can rename or delete them. You can learn in detail about categories and budgets in another tutorial. But for here, just now, you can amend or add new categories. Payment types are quite straightforward. You can add new ones or amend existing ones. Just like you can with transaction keywords. Also, with all the screens, you have a similar feature where you can select multiple items, you can delete them or merge. This applies to all items apart from accounts. For accounts, there is a delete safe facility built into the software. A password protects accidental deletion. In this instance, I have set up a password. If I try and delete any of the accounts, I click on delete. I'm prompted to confirm the deletion. I'm asked to enter my account password. If I don't know the password, I will not be able to delete the account. If I try and delete the account from the accounts toolbar, I'm also asked for the password. You won't be able to accidentally delete your accounts. I hope you've enjoyed learning about transactions. This is the end of the transactions tutorial. Bye for now.